Hi there. Today we're going to talk about Python if statements. So far we've learned how to create variables in Python. We've learned how to input data from our user and we've learned how to print out things to the, the screen. So those things are great. We can do lots of fun things with that. But in order for us to really have control over our program, we need to be able to make decisions based on uh, how much, what a variable is assigned to or what somebody inputs. So we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about how we can do that. So let's create a variable and we're going to call it your age. So I'm just going to go ahead and hard code an age in here for right now so that we can talk about the format of an if statement. So if let's say somebody inputs this um, value 13 and I have a website and you need to be 13 or older in order to be on my website. Okay, so if I have an if statement, it's going to look something like this. So if and then the comparison. So the comparison here is going to be if your age is greater than or equal to 13. Okay, so if your age is greater than or equal to 13, uh, make sure you know the difference between greater than and less than looks like that. So the big part of the arrow points to the larger item. So if your age is greater than or equal to 13, put a colon in here. This is one of the code blocks that you need to indent. So if your age is greater than or equal to 13, we're going to print a message that says you can use this website. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. Okay, by default, since I'm not asking for any input, it's saying, okay, you can use this website. So let's double check and see if this works. So if I change this to 12, nothing prints. The reason nothing prints is because this if statement, this comparison is going to evaluate to true or false. So in this case, it's going to say is 12 greater than or equal to 13. That's going to be false. So it's not going to do this statement. If you want to have it do something in the event that the statement is evaluates to false, we can use an else. So, so if it's true, do this. If it's false, we're going to print something that says, sorry, you are not old enough to use this website. Okay, so now let's check. Check our work. So there we go. Sorry, you're not old enough to use this website. Now, what if I put in, I'm like 80. 80, you can use this website. Again, 13. 13, you can use this website. Now, let's say you have different elements that you want to do. So let's say you have um, you have different levels. So if they're 13, they can maybe they can use your website, but they can just read the, the material on your website. They can't actually create an account. So in that case, we can use something called an ELIF. We can go through a couple different statements here, but you got to be careful with that because when you use an ELIF, again, you need another comparison and you need to be careful with what that comparison looks like. So if I'm going to start, like, let's say I'm going to put in, I want this to be set up so that if they're over 16, they can use the website and create an account. Okay, so if that is true, they will see this message. I also want to have something in here that's basically for people over 13. So if your age is greater than or equal to 13, we're going to have a different message. You can view this website, but you cannot create an account. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how this works. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start with a young number. Okay, I'm going to start with eight. Now, 
logically, if I look at this, this first comparison is your age greater than or equal to 16 is going to be false. So it's going to skip over to this next one. It, are you greater than or equal to 13? That's also going to be false. So it should print, sorry, you're not old enough to use this website. So here we go. There we go we got the correct answer. This is all a big part of testing your code, especially testing your logic to make sure it works. I'm going to try 12. Still not old enough. I'm going to try 13. Okay, you can view this website, but you can't create an account. Excellent. I'm going to try 16. You can use this website and create an account. And then I'm going to go back to 80. You can use this website and create an account. So again, the reason I said it's very important with that logic is because if you did it the reverse, like let's say you did 13 and then 16, let's go ahead and see what happens. If I say 13, let me change my little messages here too so that it, it is more accurate. Okay, so let's say I, I created my code this way. I'm going to have the same messages. So if they're over 13, you can view this website, but you can't create an account. Okay, awesome. Let me change this to 16. So they should get the, you can use this website and you can create an account. Oh, but look, I get you can view this website, but you can't create an account. So the reason that's happening is because it's going to this first comparison and it's coming back with a true. So once it finds that true statement, it's done with this if, this if statement. It's going to just jump over these two things. doesn't matter what you have in here. So you're not going to create an error, so to speak. You're not going to create a syntax error, but you are going to have a logic error. And that logic error is because you have to make sure that you've set this up so that the, the very first thing, like the, the biggest amount, is going to happen first. So any anything from six, 16 and up is going to be, you know, hey, you've got this. But if it doesn't meet this one, then it can be a little more restricted here. Now, if I did this reverse, I could technically say less than or equal to 13 um, or 16 and change the messages that way. But this is why it's important to test your code and to go through many different test cases to make sure everything matches the way you want it to. Okay, so let me, um, let's go back to inputting. So let's get our, our input. Okay, because that's great for hard coding numbers using our variables. But let's work with the real world world here and get some data from our user. So let's say we're going to do something like um, favorite num equals input. What is your favorite number between 1 and 100? Okay, so one very important thing to note to recall is that when you do an input by default, the data type of that input is going to be a what? It's going to be string, correct? Hopefully that's what you guessed. Now we can test our data type by um, printing out the type of that variable. So I'm going to do that to, to demonstrate that whatever I input here is going to be stored as a string. Okay, so what's your favorite number between 10 and, or between 1 and 100? Uh, I'm going to say 88. Okay, so then it's going to tell me the type, and it's telling me here that I have input a string. So if I make a comparison operator that looks something like uh, greater than 50, I'm going to say uh, you like large numbers. Okay very creative, I know. But watch what happens when I run this. So, so far, no problem. I'm going to put my 88 in there, and then I'm going to get an error. And this is a very common error that you're going to run into. It says this is a type error. This is not supported between instances of string and int. So basically what it's saying is that in line 5, there is a problem, and it shows you exactly 
where the problem is. Okay, so it's telling us there's a problem with this greater greater than sign. So it does not like that you are comparing a, a string data type to an integer. So there's a few different things you can do. The favorite thing that I like to do is I like to just put an int around the entire input statement. And so what that does is it's going to run that input statement first and it's going to get that string value that I've input of 88 and then it's going to change the type of that to an integer. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I'm going to put 88 in here again and you'll see that the type is now listed as an int and now my comparison is going to work. Okay, so you could do it this way or the, I don't like this one quite as much because I like to handle things right then or you could technically put the int around this comparison. Let's see if that works. So I'm going to put 88 in here again. Now even though the type is a string we're changing it to an integer right here and let's see what happens now after the fact if it is a string or an integer. Okay so you see right here it's a string and it's still a string. So it's still a string because we're basically just saying hey um, let's go ahead and just take the int value of this favnum. It's not actually changing it through an assignment operator so it's still seeing this variable as a string. The reason it's changing it to an int here is because we're using an equal sign which is an assignment operator. So it's working its way from the inside again it's coming in as a string the value of 88 and then when we put that int around it it is changing it from a string data type to an integer data type and then it is assigning that value to favnum. It's kind of going backwards in a way. Okay so that is um, something important here. Now let me um, talk about one other thing. So the difference between a single equal sign and a double equal sign. So this is a very important concept to understand. Let me get rid of that type now that we've discussed the type situation. So instead of having a greater than sign, let's say I want to check to see if the number that they have entered is the number, my special number, my secret number, right? Um, so let's just say something like you guessed it. Okay, so uh, this way we'll, we'll say guess a number between 1 and 100. Okay, um, else print, sorry, not correct. Alright, so here we go. Guess a number between, alright, we'll put 50, sorry, not correct. Now this would be best to use with a, with a while statement. 50, you guessed it. Okay, so if I didn't do this correctly and I just used a single equal sign. You'll see here that I'm, I've got a red squiggly line which is basically telling me, hey, there's a problem. When I click to run it, it's going to say, hey, this is invalid syntax. So it's not really giving me too much information other than that. But when you see something like this, a single equal sign and invalid syntax, just to remind yourself, a comparison operator needs to have two equal signs. A single equal sign is an assignment operator. So don't use an assignment operator in a comparison. Um, let's take a look at the opposite of uh, an equal sign. There's the not equals. Okay, so this isn't going to make any sense right now. Um, let's just switch this. This is kind of weird logic here. Else they got it correct. Yes, you are right. Okay, so this is basically saying if it's not equal to 50, tell them they're not correct. If else, so it is equal to 50, yes, you're right. So let's do 55, sorry, not correct. And let's do 50, yes, you are right. So there you have it. This is a simple introduction into 
how to use if statements and comparison operators in Python. Hopefully this will be good enough to get you started in writing your own if else or if elif else statements. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Bye.